Hello, I'm Richard Moore from NASA's Langley Research Center, and I'm here to tell you about NASA's exciting research to understand the environmental impacts of aviation and how biofuels may be able to help. And we're motivated to understand the impacts of aircraft engine exhaust on climate uh, because we think that the, the contrails and the contrail cirrus clouds that form on the particles in this jet exhaust have a greater radiative forcing, that is, a greater impact on Earth's climate today than all of the aviation carbon dioxide emissions since that first powered airplane flight long ago, which is a pretty bold statement to make and really underscores the importance of these cl man-made clouds for affecting climate. In addition, we know that there's environmental impacts closer to the surface where we live and, and work, and that people and communities downwind of airports are affected by these particles and gas, gaseous emissions that can affect their health and their, their local air quality. And so that's another reason to reduce the emissions, which we expect are probably only going to increase in the future, uh, especially it, when air travel rebounds from the, the recent COVID-related dip. We expect it to, to accelerate rapidly at a rate of about 2 to 3 percent a year. And so NASA has conducted a robust research program over the past couple decades to understand how changes in jet fuel composition may impact the, the uh, emissions. And so this is showing one such example where we're using the NASA DC-8 to burn different fuels. We mount a probe stand on the, the ground and we run a long tube off to the side where we, the scientists, are with our instruments to measure the, the number of particles that are being emitted by the engines per kilogram of fuel burn. And so what we see is that as we transition from the, the petroleum-based jet A fuels, these red points, to the alternative fuel blends, and even to the pure biofuels themselves, we see dramatic orders of magnitude reductions in the number of particles that are being emitted. And so this gives us real hope that biofuels may answer the promise of reducing contrails and climate impact. But we know that cruise conditions up in the upper atmosphere are very different from the conditions on the ground. It's much colder, the pressures are lower, and frankly, the engines are just operating in a very different way. And so that motivates us to do in-flight real-world testing. And so again, we're leveraging the NASA DC-8 based at NASA Armstrong Flight Research Facility. It's a four-engine plane and it's got a segregated fuel tank, so we're able to send different fuels to different engines in order to understand the, how the emissions will change under controlled uh, set of environmental conditions. And then we chase the NASA DC-8 with smaller air research aircraft. You saw the T-33 from the National Research Council Canada. Here's the NASA Langley Falcon taking off. And you can see on the crown of the aircraft some, some probes sticking up, some inlet tubes, uh, and even more on, our, on the Falcon from our German collaborators from DLR, the German Aerospace Center. And so what we do is we use those tubes to draw in the air from outside the aircraft inside the cabin and distribute it to a, a whole bunch of science instruments that are there to, to measure the, the properties of the jet exhaust. And so after all the aircraft are in the air, we, we form up in a formation flight and the research smaller research aircraft position themselves behind the NASA DC-8 uh, in, in a series. And, and we sample the exhaust. And so you're seeing a, an image here of the, the NASA Langley Falcon pilots bringing the, the crown of the plane where those probes and inlets are up into the contrail in order to sample those the soot particles being emitted by the engines, uh, as well as then to, to sample the contrail properties using state-of-the-art cloud probes that are mounted under each of the wings. And so you can see here, one of the really nice aspects of the DC-8 is, again, with those four engines, we can burn the different fuels, we can change the thrust settings, and we get really distinct contrails. You're able to see uh, the distinct contrail from each of the four engines in, in that image. And so typically what we're doing is each of the planes comes in, uh, they come in below the contrail, and then uh, the pilots carefully bring the, the top of the plane where those inlets and probes are up into the exhaust plume. And as the airplane uh, enters the turbulent plume, it, the, the wings start to lose a little lift and it falls back. Uh, and then the aircraft descends and, and we repeat the exercise again. So that's the view from the side. We can also look at the view that the, the pilots are seeing from the cockpit. So on the right is, is the forward-looking camera from the NASA Langley Falcon. 
And on the left is our real-time heads-up display, and so we have information about the concentration of carbon dioxide and nitrogen oxides. We have information about the particle concentrations as well as their absorption properties. And then we have a right wing mounted cloud probe that we'll see in just a second as the pilot brings that right wing up. We start to see the, the data coming in on the, the ice crystal size distribution. And so the, the pilots would typically sample each of the inborn engines in turn. Uh, again, starting out below the plume, bringing the aircraft into um, close proximity behind the DC-8 source aircraft. And then after they had uh, all the instruments were ready to sample, they would bring the crown of the plane up into the exhaust. And again, we see a signal from all of our, our instruments. And so by looking at how uh, these different um, plumes vary together, we're able to understand uh, the emissions that are relevant to, to model the, the impacts of aviation on climate. In addition, uh, we can change the engine thrust settings. So the, the top engine is showing, uh, top picture is showing the inboard engines throttled back. The bottom picture is throwing, showing the engine, inboard engines throttled up. And you can see dramatic differences, even with your naked eye, of, of the contrail intensity. And so we published these results uh, in 2017 in the journal Nature. Uh, what we found was that biofuel blends uh, with the petroleum-based jet fuels do in fact reduce the soot particle emissions by about 50 to 60 percent, which is a pretty big deal. And so what that implies is by changing the jet fuel from, from a traditional fuel to a bio-based fuel, we can actually reduce the number of particles being emitted from the engines and there, thereby reduce their, uh, their contrail forming potential and their climate impact. Thank you.